We welcome you to Cary, North Carolina for today's NWSL Game of the Week on CBS Sports. Brazilian Dynamo Dabinha named NWSL Championship MVP last time she took this field for North Carolina. And Shea Groom, the newly minted NWSL Challenge Cup Championship MVP, leads the Houston Dash. We bring you a battle of champions today between Houston and North Carolina. Now, we were meant to be in Portland, Oregon. However, the wildfires that are ravaging that state have caused hazardous air conditions in Portland. The game between Portland and OL Reign was moved to Tuesday, and we switch to this matchup between Houston and North Carolina, all part of the NWSL Fall Series. You'll see games going on over the next six weeks. The teams divided into three regional pods throughout the duration of this series. Now we say battle of champions for this matchup. Here's why the Houston Dash came through the NWSL Challenge Cup, a month long tournament that this league staged in June and July as winners. The Houston Dash had never even made it to the playoffs in their previous NWSL history, but they come out in the Challenge Cup on top. A team that knows all about winning championships is the North Carolina Courage. This is a club that has won the last three regular season titles in the NWSL, and they've won the last two NWSL championships. So quite a matchup between these two champions as we get going with our NWSL Game of the Week today. Hi, everyone. I'm Jen Hildreth alongside Former U.S. midfielder Lori Lindsay. Lori, I've called it a battle of champions a couple times now, but I want to know, do you think right now these two champions are the two best teams in the NWSL? They absolutely are. For Houston, this is a team that's the most recent Challenge Cup winners. They were aggressive in the offseason to bring players in that could sure things up defensively. And in turn, we're starting to see them a lot more dangerous in the attack. And then for North Carolina, the most dominant team in NWSL history. And regardless of formation or personnel changes, their style of play that has proven to be successful will stay the same no matter what. We may see some changes today for North Carolina, but one familiar face has got to be Lynn Williams. She has proven that she is a prolific goal scorer in the NWSL. She can attack you down the central areas. She can attack you out wide, and she can create chances out of nothing with her skill and pure athleticism. But it's her ability and evolution of her game to be able to find the space in behind opposing teams' defenses and link up with her midfielders that has changed her game and can allowed her to become even more dangerous. And then for Houston, Christy Mua, she's a veteran, experienced midfielder. She's battled some injuries as of late, but is starting to find more consistency and versatility in her play. She's not gonna be afraid to drop deep, set play from the central areas, but it's her attacking ability that sets her apart. It's something that James Clarkson, her coach, wants to see more of her to be able to get in advanced positions and find the back of the net. Well, Christy Mewis, before the game, took a few minutes to speak with our Marissa Pella. Christy, your team enters today as the Challenge Cup champions. How do you build off of your summer success within this fall series? Um, I think it's just important to stay focused. We can't, um, you, we can't really think about what happened in the past. Obviously, we're so excited that we won, but I think it's just taking these next steps forward, and we just want to compete and continue to play well and hopefully win this fall series. Your coach, James Clarkson, said controlling the midfield has to be a top priority today. How do you win that battle? Um, I think we, coming off of the Challenge Cup, I think our midfield uh, was doing really well. I felt really connected with them. Um, so I think we just need to continue that and just get on the same page as soon as possible. Um, but I have full faith in us, and I'm really excited to play today. From a mentality standpoint, how have you and your teammates managed the stop and go rhythm this season has had? Yeah, well, one huge thing that we talk about is emotional control, um, and that's just really important to us. And we all uh, really work hard to obviously stay emotionally together and emotionally controlled. So I think if we can continue to uh, to do that, we'll we'll be fine. Thanks for your time, Christy. Thanks. 
Let's take a look at today's starting lineups for the Houston Dash. No Rachel Daly, but this is a team, Lori, whose lineup is really not that much changed from the Challenge Cup. And they're still in their favorite formation of that 4-3-3. Three, three. Keep your eye on number 23, Allie Pysock. She is one of those changes in for injured Megan Oyster. But also keep your eye on number 13, Sophie Schmidt. She'll be tasked with screening that back line for Houston and stopping any sort of transitional play for North Carolina. And then the attack is number eight, Michelle Prince. They'll look to get her faced up 1v1, look to not only create chances for herself, but for her teammates as well. Now for the North Carolina Courage. Yes, you are going to see plenty of changes. And where do we begin? <laughs> Typically they're in the, a box midfield four, but today they're going to find themselves in a 3-1-4-2. Keep your eye on number seven, Abby Dahlkemper, U.S. International. She'll be the one that's going to lead the way, not only with her presence, but vocally as well in that back line. And then number 10, Dabinia. And number two, Lauren Malay. How do they link up with number nine, Lynn Williams? Their ability to interchange, ask questions of that back line for Houston Dash will prove to be successful for them. And North Carolina has never lost to Houston in eight previous meetings. They did not meet up at the Challenge Cup. They will meet up today. We will have the kickoff when we return. The North Carolina Courage winning the 2019 NWSL Championship on this field in Cary, North Carolina last year. Now they face up against the Houston Dash in the first game for both teams of this fall series. We didn't exactly expect to be covering this match, but Marissa Pillow, who had a last minute flight change, knows change is what it's all about right now, isn't it? This year has really proven that change is really the only constant, with today's match being a prime example of that. You see, this Houston-North Carolina game should have been played last night, and we as a broadcast should have been covering the Portland OL Rain match. However, things change because of the wildfires and poor air quality out in Portland. That match has been postponed to next week, and that's why we are here in Cary, North Carolina. But change is nothing new for the NWSL this season. The league has managed to maneuver its way through an abbreviated preseason, a bubble life out in Utah for the Challenge Cup, and now the second restart to play. North Carolina forward Lynn Williams said while every team has experienced adversity this year, she's so proud with how the courage have handled change. She said right now the team is in a very positive state of mind, and right now they're focusing on controlling the controllables, which starts with a strong mentality and state of mind. That, more than anything, is what Williams hopes is on display today. Thank you, Marissa. The NWSL Challenge Cup may be over, but the challenges certainly continue both here and across the United States as many other sports are underway. We will have kickoff coming your way after this next break right here on CBS Sports. Just about Just ready to go ready to under go a under sunny, a sunny, sunny sky, sky in Cary, North in Carolina. Carolina. First match of this NWSL Fall Series for both of these teams. The Houston Dash coming off that NWSL Challenge Cup Championship. They are wearing all white. And the North Carolina Courage on their home field. The two-time defending regular season NWSL champions in Navy. This match being played at Salem Stadium at Wake Med Soccer Park in Cary, North Carolina. Jen Hildreth, Lori Lindsay, Marissa Pilla. Happy to have you along for the ride. That is Nichelle Prince getting her first touch on the ball. Number eight in white, certainly a player to watch. Perhaps one of the best for Houston in their last few matches of that championship run at the Challenge Cup. Harry Ricardo being put under some pressure by Houston. A quick shot, and it does get tapped wide by Canadian goalkeeper Steph LeBay. And Jen, we knew this could be a fast start for both teams. And Houston doing a good job of putting North Carolina under pressure right away, picking the pocket. It's Christy Mewis, a player that keep your eye on throughout this game with her ability to get forward and be a presence on both sides of the ball. It just finds Carrie Ricaro, picks her pocket, and then it's Houston Dash with a good early look. But LeBay 
making sure that the score stays 0-0. Houston feeling confident on their set piece chances. That ball went into a crowd of people, a little too much contact going on and the whistle is blown. Now we genuinely are not quite sure what we're gonna see from this North Carolina formation, but one thing, Houston sending the message early, you better not take too much time on the ball because they're coming after you. Well, the beauty of it, Jen, is that Paul Riley said the same thing to us. He's not sure what to expect either. Well, this ball gets popped right into a Houston player as LaBay perhaps a little careless in her distribution. And because of that, Jen, it's North Carolina in a brand new formation, have been so successful in that 4-4-2 with a block in the midfield. But now they find themselves in a 3-1-4-2 today. Could potentially leave them vulnerable in and around the back outside those three center backs that they're playing with. And it's something that Houston Dash have noticed already in these first couple of minutes, just putting them under pressure, see if they can force North Carolina to give up the ball and pounce on them early. Houston coming through the three knockout rounds of the Challenge Cup without allowing a goal. They really relied on their defense and had just enough offense to get them through. They had to go through a scoreless draw in the quarterfinals against Utah Royals FC of the Challenge Cup. Made it through on penalty kicks there. Their goalkeeper, Jane Campbell, just fantastic. And what a weapon, what a wall she is when it comes to defending penalties. And then a win against Portland in the semifinals and a win against Chicago in the championship of that Challenge Cup, that taking place July 26 to wrap up that tournament. James Clarkson in his second year as the head coach of the Houston Dash talks an awful lot, Lori, about what they are trying to build there in Houston. Well, they are aggressive in the off season. Have to defend this free kick here from North Carolina. Courage usually such a threat. That is Lauren Millay. And she lost it. And Jen Houston Dash was aggressive in the off season. James Clarkson really wanting to build a franchise that entices big name players, successful players to come in. Sending a signal to allow and let players know that they want to be a winning franchise. And this was an excellent start for them in the Challenge Cup. And it was something that he talked about coming into this game as well, though. Just not allowing people to realize, hey, we're just this one tournament winners. We are continuing to build. We're continuing to get better. And this is a good first five minute start for them to prove that they're on the front foot and they're using this fall series to continue to build. That chip on the shoulder of the Houston Dash wanting to prove to everyone that Challenge Cup title was not a fluke. They have a second corner kick opportunity. It will be Christy Mewis to take it. Bends it in with that left foot punched away by LaBay. Collision in the box and our referee Matt Franz will have to go over and take a look at it. I believe that was rookie Addison Merrick for North Carolina. Former Big 12 Defender of the Year out of Kansas who took the worst end of that collision, and she can see blood on her hand. It was a good corner in, dangerous corner, forcing LeBay to make the punching save, and then you see the two players just going up and Merrick getting the worst of it, which looks like Latsko. When you look at some of the changes for North Carolina in this match, Lori, certainly some of them, Paul Riley's hand may have been forced a little bit because this is a team that is without a dozen of players that they had at the NWSL Challenge Cup, either due to players opting out or has a couple of injuries. Sam Mewis was a player, Christy Mewis's younger sister and a U.S. international who is now playing at Manchester City, although her rights are still with the North Carolina Courage. And then three other players also on loan. So a lot of changes personnel-wise for North Carolina that could help go to this change in formation. Christy Mewis not getting the chance to play against her sister, as we've seen in the last few years, that sister-sister matchup in the NWSL with Sam and Christy. But it's also a bit by design for Paul Riley with North Carolina in terms of trying something new, which some people might say that's crazy. All they've done is win with their previous formation. 
Well, I think it sums up the North Carolina team, which are always hunting. They're always looking ways, little minute ways to get better, continue to excel as a club. And this is an ample opportunity for some of these players that wouldn't be able to get minutes on this North Carolina team to be able to express themselves, show what they can bring to this team and, and fight for positions, not only now in this fall series, but going forward. We have an expansion draft coming up. So this is time for players to be protected by North Carolina, their club in particular. But again, just showing because this has been such a consistent lineup for North Carolina and it's been a competitive environment. And one thing that Paul Riley continues to speak about is how difficult it is for players to get minutes. And this is a great opportunity for players to shine. Yeah, because you talk about players the likes of Crystal Dunn, Abby Erzig, who's a New Zealand international, often wears that captain's armband, Jaylene Daniels, Jess McDonald, Kristen Hamilton. There's another look at the collision. And Merrick was a player who was immediately called in, thrown into the fire as a rookie in the Challenge Cup. And what was your take on that, Lori? Because she's just stepped right into that role. And North Carolina now, they were eliminated in the quarterfinals of the Challenge Cup but I don't think anybody would argue that they were the most dominant team for the preliminary rounds. I mean, they didn't lose a game. <laughs> and they started that tournament, which was unbelievable in itself, almost the exact same way they ended the 2019 championship. And they were aggressive, and Merritt came in and stepped in well beyond her years, showed maturity defensively. And that's not easy for a North Carolina team that... Well, speaking of, of not easy, Lori, is having to make a sub and not only having to make a sub this early in the match if you're North Carolina, but you're bringing in a player, getting word that it is Peyton Perea, who will come on for Addison Merrick, who was with North Carolina last year as a national team replacement player. Clubs were allowed to bring in extra players when their players were away at the World Cup. She never played, however, for the Courage. Now she was signed to a short-term contract that was announced earlier this week. She's going to get that opportunity. But you wonder, does this change anything in the way that North Carolina tries to play? Well, it doesn't change the way they try to play because one thing that Paul Riley, North Carolina co coach, was clear about is they will stick with this three-back formation throughout the fall series to be able to give it time see how they're successful, where they can put teams under pressure. But this is a tough start for them to have to make a sub, but then also just the ebbs and flows of the game, the start and stop so far for both teams, actually. Houston was really on the attack, putting a lot of pressure on North Carolina, taking a page out of the Courage's book, really, and pressuring that back line, trying to force turnovers, which they had done a couple of times. There's the veteran Sophie Schmidt, who gets it up to Groom. Prince, couple of moves to get herself into the area. Ball is deflected back in front. Groom had a good look at it and knows it. And that's exactly what you want if you're Houston Dash from Nichelle Prince, taking on 1v1, getting in line. It's a tough ball across, but then it's Shea Groom coming up for the follow through. Just gets underneath it, sends it over the crossbar. But again, a fast start for Houston Dash. And Jen, going back to what you were asking about the substitution with Perea, the only thing that's going to do is shift Abby Dahlkemper into that center back position centrally, and it's going to push Perea out wide right and then Kurtz to the left. So it's just some personnel shifts, but not formation. Is that just to get the experienced Dahlkemper there in the, in the middle of those two? 100%. You're already starting with a, a young, inexperienced back line. So sure things up with Abby Dahlkemper moving her into that central spot so she can be a vocal leader as well. That is Dabinia. Had the ball for a moment. Lynn Williams, second all time in the NWSL with 50 goals scored in the regular season. Ryan Williams. Second Williams in that starting lineup for North Carolina. A little less experience. This is just her sixth appearance in the NWSL. Third year with the Courage, just hasn't had a lot of opportunities. 
as loaded as this club is. And as you've talked about, as Paul Riley talked about, this is an opportunity that she'll be looking to grab onto. That is Kaylee Kurtz, the player you mentioned, sliding over onto that left side, a former trialist with North Carolina back in 2018. Had nine appearances last year for the Courage. Former SEC Defensive Player of the Year out of South Carolina. And that ball was out of bounds. And in this Houston attack, one that is so often dominated by the English international, Rachel Daly, a lot more attention on players like Nichelle Prince and James Carson telling us he felt like she may have been their best player in the last three matches of that Challenge Cup. And when you think about the adversity that she had to go through, losing her dad in June and then going back and forth to see him having to quarantine a couple of times and then finally finding her feet and getting in rhythm with the Houston Dash team, She's been a tremendous story and will continue to be a player to watch in this league. And I agree with James Clarkson. She was so good in that wing position for Houston Dash, especially with all eyes being on Rachel Daly and even Chrissy Mewis and Shea Groom making runs out of the midfield. It freed up Nichelle Prince on the wing to be able to take on 1v1 and be dynamic and, and really show how dangerous she can be in the final third. And with the start of this game, we can tell already tell that she's building on that confidence that she gained in the Challenge Cup. Former collegiate player at Ohio State, Prince, also a member of the Canadian national team, over 59 appearances for the 25-year-old. There is Prince, who pops onto that ball, wants to switch it across. Mewis, nice move to get herself free, and hits it out. When we're talking a lot about Nichelle Prince, Marissa, you've got more you can add. Right. Houston head coach James Clarkson described Nichelle Prince as one of the hidden gems in this league. He said Prince doesn't get the attention she really deserves league-wide, but between Prince's 1v1 attacking abilities that Lori mentioned and her positional awareness, Clarkson said Prince has the making to be a star. And I just overheard their bench assistant coach Twyla Kaufman praising Nichelle Prince for her ball movement and her vision so far in this game. Yeah, she's, she's looked very active early, Marissa. And the ball movement already from the Houston Dash has proven successful. You can tell North Carolina not quite familiar with this formation, something to be expected. Paul Riley mentioned that. And here's the foul on Christy Mewis. Her and Ricaro just getting caught up together. That will set up a free kick for the dash. Sophie Schmidt, the 32-year-old, ready to play it forward. She'll keep it on the ground, though. Go to Haley Hansen, the recently converted outside back for the dash. Safe to say that playing did not work out as they hoped. But you will see some experimentation, trying different things, be it formations or set piece opportunities throughout this fall series. And that'll look different from each club depending on what they're trying to work on. We've talked about Houston Dash wanting to continue to solidify their starting lineup, continue to put fear in other teams in terms of their attack, build on the momentum that they got at the Challenge Cup. And then North Carolina, completely new formation change, wanting to try out new players, giving them opportunities to get minutes. Speaking of new players, that was Bridget Andrzejewski you just got to look at. The rookie out of the University of North Carolina knows this field well, having played both ACC championships and NCAA championships in Cary when she was in college. A chance in transition for North Carolina now. Connection not quite right. But Jen, that's the first time that we've been able to see North Carolina get out on the break, switch the point of attack. And that's what we're going to want to find in this formation, those wingers out wide to be able to create numbers overload, switch a point of attack quickly, and then out the other side. And it was Dabini at the end that was making the run through. 
an area that she's been so dangerous in to unbalance opposing defenses. Well, and Dabinia just one of those players, Lori. We've seen it on the international stage with Brazil. We've seen it in the NWSL. She can just flat take over games in periods of time. And not arguably, but she has been the best player the last couple of seasons in the NWSL. Getting herself even more fit, her ability on the ball, taking on 1v1s, her final pass. She is a complete player and has been so dangerous and one of the reasons why they have been so successful in the last couple of years. Dabinia named championship MVP for North Carolina as the Courage won their second straight last year, beating the Chicago Red Stars in that final. Here comes Dabinia. This could be trouble. Dabinia goes down to the ground and a penalty kick awarded to the Courage. Yellow card handed out as well. I believe it'll be Chapman who is booked. It was a penalty kick that decided the last meeting between these two teams in 2019. That was in the 87th minute then. Here's a look at what just earned this one for North Carolina. And it wasn't the right pass originally, but it then misplaced by Naughton. And it allows the, the ball to hold up for Dabina to make her run. And this Alicia Chapman that comes in doesn't need to go to ground, can just stand her ground. She has cover coming in behind her. Just slow down Dabinia. Unfortunately, gives up the penalty kick. Abby Dahlkemper to take it. She beats Campbell this time. We talked about how great Jane Campbell is at stopping penalty kicks, but how about that? Abby Dahlkemper knew exactly where she wanted to put it. Low, hard, to the far corner. Opposite way of Jane Campbell. Makes no mistakes about it. And you can tell by the way that she stepped up to that ball. Dahlkemper just knew exactly where she wanted to go. Didn't second guess herself and North Carolina weather the storm early and find themselves up 1-0. Paul Riley talked to us about the expanded leadership role that Abby Dahlkemper, who is a member of the U.S. Women's National Team, but how much he's gonna rely on her, especially now with a lot of the players who are not with the courage at the moment, that he needs her to step up and be a leader. And boy, that sends a great message there, just how composed and confident she was in finishing off that penalty and giving North Carolina the advantage. And Jane Campbell, in her NWSL regular season career, has an incredible percentage. Lori, she saved seven of 14 penalty kicks that she's faced. You're not supposed to do that <laughs> as a goalkeeper, but that's what she's done. She saved two in the penalty kick shootout in the quarterfinals of the Challenge Cup. Generally, you do think the advantage goes to the shooter, and Dahlkemper certainly made it look that way on that attempt. Oh, it absolutely does. And it really does set Jane Campbell apart in those moments when you need her to come up with those big saves. On both teams showing that they are going to pounce on anything lackluster in the back. It nearly resulted in a goal for Houston in the opening minutes of this match, and Dabinia getting onto the ball is what earned the penalty. Danica Evans, new player for North Carolina this season, has played previously with the Orlando Pride. Offside flag goes up against the Courage. Jeb, we could see what goals do. They build confidence. North Carolina early in this game, a bit shaky. Houston Dash putting them under pressure, creating some opportunities themselves. But then with that goal, North Carolina now starting to find Dabinia more often, starting to keep possession. You can tell they're still unsure about their movement off the ball, where to go in this new formation, but still using their defensive presence to put Houston under some pressure in these few minutes after that goal. How tough is that, Lori? I mean, you get a bit hardwired, don't you, in terms of your movements and your runs and where you're looking when you're so used to playing a certain way. And then when it drastically shifts like it does, is there an adjustment period? There is adjustment period. It's just really about reading players and understanding the little intricacies between each other. And you'll see partnerships start to come out. We're seeing Laura Malay, Dabinia getting more minutes together, had some time together in the Challenge Cup. Obviously, Lynn Williams and Dabinia have teamed up for a number of goals. So those are the partnerships that you're going to want to lean on when you're in a new formation. Here comes Prince. Beautiful ball across. And once again, Shea Groom skies it high. I mean, those are the opportunities she has to put away, and she is well aware of that. And this 
ball. You're exactly right, Jen. Has got to be in the back of the net. This is so easy. Nichelle Prince doing all the work again, drawing two players out, splits them with that ball that's laid back to the penalty spot. But then Shea Groom just can't adjust her feet, gets underneath it again, leaning back. Well, those are easy putaways. Nichelle Prince does all the work for her. All she has to do is continue to stay over it, put it in the far post. I mean, everything about that play was right for Houston, wasn't it? You had Prince doing an excellent job drawing defenders in. She gets the ball across. She sets it up perfectly. You have one of your best attacking players and Groom running onto it. And I really like what we've seen so far from Houston Dash, moving the ball quickly, looking to try to switch the point of attack, looking for Shea Groom and Christy Mewis coming out of the midfield. But this will be the difference in their team. When they create these chances, they've got to find the back of the net. Because this is a team that, like many others, had to weather a lot of storms, the ebbs, ebbs and flows. But when you're looking to build a successful franchise, you've got to be prolific in your goal scoring and put these chances away. A lot of numbers central for both teams right now. North Carolina does try to go out wide with Evans. Near post and Campbell, former Stanford All-American and a goalkeeper who's seen some time with the U.S. national team, certainly with the youth teams and has three appearances with the senior team, has no problem scooping that up. Mewis coming all the way back to try to play make and pick this ball up for Houston. Here's Andrew Jeske. Ali Prysock, the player you mentioned, having to fill in for the injured Megan Oyster on that back line. Oyster, as James Clarkson told us, really just trying to be very precautious with the rib injury she suffered in the Challenge Cup. Try to make sure that it is fully healed before they put her back out on the field. Such a reliable defender, Megan Oyster, one of those players who is new to Houston this year, but became very important in their run to the Challenge Cup title. Haley Hansen. Mewis, either finding the ball herself or the ball is finding her, but definitely getting herself involved quite a bit. The one thing, Jen, we just saw Perea take that ball off of Christy Mewis. But this is the little nuances in the game that the Houston Dash need to take advantage of. It's about 15 minutes now that Perea has been on the field, coming in as a substitute, making her debut for North Carolina. And when you're looking at this three back already, a new formation for North Carolina, can you put Perea under pressure if you're Houston Dash? Continue to find Andrew Jeske on that left-hand side, looking her to take her on 1v1 and get numbers around her to create overloads. Now Dahl Kemper got away from her. Shea Groom has another opportunity in the box, lays it off unselfishly, and Lasko says thank you very much. The Houston Dash have tied it up. And this time, Shea Groom knows exactly what to do. She wins this ball. She sees that she can pressure Abby Dahl Kemper. There's no movement out of the midfield for Abby Dahl Kemper to be able to bypass that first line of pressure. And Shea Groom does a good job of picking her pocket and then just slots it to Veronica Latsko to tap it in. Wonderful play, defensive play from the Houston Dash. And this was always going to be the question mark coming into this game, Jen, about this back three for North Carolina, what the movement off the ball was going to look like, how they were going to build out of the back. And there might be some trials and tribulations, as we just saw in that goal, that they're going to have to get through to kind of build confidence and understand where the space is to bypass the first line of pressure. But right now, Houston Dash doing a good job of just stepping up and creating issues for that back line. I think you really give some credit to, to Shea Groom, who's had those two missed opportunities, did not make the selfish choice. Saw she had Latsko running with her, 
and opted to take the assist instead. Stays calm, patient. Perfectly weighted pass for Latsko just to be able to tap it in. Veronica Latsko, former Virginia Cavalier in her third year with the Houston Dash. Former third round pick back in 2018. There's Perea, forced into this match when Merrick went out with injury after that collision in the opening minutes of the match with Latsko. Meredith Speck, one of those players for North Carolina that's just been on the outskirts trying to break through a huge opportunity for her here in this fall series. Lynn Williams giving chase. Jen, you just mentioned Lynn Williams, and a bit unusual for us to not really call her name much in this opening 30 minutes. Typically a player that's had a four or five chances, if not a goal at this point in time for North Carolina. And you can tell they're just having a difficult time being able to find her, bypassing those first lines of pressure and any space in behind that back line for Houston. And if you think about Lori, when we talked to James Clarkson, head coach of the Houston Dash this week, he said, look, I know North Carolina has a lot of different players out there, but they still have three of the best players in the league in Lynn Williams, Dabinia, Abby Dahlkemper. They're still going to be the three best players on this field. Now, he may have been being a bit humble to some of his <laughs> own players as well, but it's the point being there is still a ton of talent out there. And credit Houston because neither Williams or Dabinia has been able to break free other than that penalty kick attempt that Dabinia earned. Houston has been good defensively. Something that we talked about that they built this team off of, brought players in to sure things up. And then from that defensive pressure, they've been able to get the likes of shake room in more advanced positions. And we just saw that off of that pressure defensively on Abby Dahlkemper, able to force over a turnover and then a goal. Yeah, how about that? With all the talk about the inexperienced defenders on that back line for North Carolina, it was the most experienced one, the starting center back for the World Cup winning U.S. women's national team that actually committed the error that led to the Houston goal. Dabinia just not being allowed to turn by Sophie Schmidt. Two international players there who is been so enjoyable to watch in this league. Dabinia playing for the Brazilian national team. Schmidt, a veteran of four World Cups, three Olympics with Canada. Here's Latsko, the goal scorer. Going to take some time, get it back to Alicia Chapman, another Canadian national team player on this Dash club. There are four of them. No U.S. internationals for Houston. On their run to the Challenge Cup title. Here is Ricaro. Shea Groom named MVP of that Challenge Cup championship match. She had a late goal in the 2-0 win to seal the deal for Houston over Chicago as our first hydration break is upon us. It was decided before this fall series would start that there would be hydration breaks throughout the duration of the series, one in each half. Reminder that you can stream CBS Sports HQ, the completely free and always on sports news network for highlights, breaking news, and expert picks. Download the CBS Sports app on your phone or connected TV to watch today. And man, you need something to help you stay connected with all of the action in the sports world right now. We've had some action, Lori, so far in our first half. Well, as Houston Dash, it was getting off on the front foot. But the penalty 
wound up putting North Carolina there. They got the yellow card. There's Dahl Kemper to take the penalty. So yeah, Houston started strong, but it was North Carolina. That's the way this game goes sometimes with the early advantage. But then it would be Houston Dash, it would regroup, and it would be Shea Groom that picks the pocket of Abby Dahl Kemper and just slots it to the wide open Veronica Latsko to tap it in. And well done from the Houston Dash to regain composure, use their defensive pressure to be able to tie this game up 1-1 really two defensive miscues that both teams were able to jump on, take advantage of. And that could wind up being the difference. You never know as, as both teams, North Carolina in particular, trying to figure out a lot of changes in this fall series. And one of the things to remind everyone too, with a lot of these big name players that you see, either some of whom have opted out, some of whom may be on loan. Remember, a lot of those loans are just through the end of the year. So those players you can expect back in the NWSL. Player like a Rachel Daly for Houston. That loan is only through the end of the year. And the players, some of the US players you've heard of going over to England in particular, Alex Morgan, the latest of those to go. Hers also, by the way, is a loan only through the end of 2020 as Nichelle Prince Takes matters into her own hands, gets it across again, nearly identical to what she did on the goal. It is stopped that time by North Carolina. Oh my goodness, how did that not find the back of the net? And it's Nichelle Prince again, continuing to find space, taking on 1v1 and I think James Clarkson is onto something, a hidden <laughs> gem. I think we're gonna be in tune with her right away though. She's not gonna stay hidden for long, is she? She starts out in the middle of the field, but then just a little touch past Kaylee Kurtz, uses her speed, her skill to get past her. Kaylee Kurtz goes to the ground. That's a good driven ball across. And the runs were there just too early for Houston Dash to make any sort of connection right in the six yard box. Houston getting some looks against that back line of North Carolina. One Marissa that had to make a change early without a Merrick going out. We apologize. We'll try to get that update from Marissa momentarily. But also the point I was making with some of the players who are away, remember that a lot of those players have also signed multiple year deals with their NWSL clubs or their rights are still retained by the NWSL club. So still a lot of positive things for this league as we look forward to hopefully a less tumultuous year overall in this country in 2021. About 10 minutes remaining in our first half, another free kick being set up by North Carolina. They have to play this short. Recycle ball out to Ryan Williams. And having played for North Carolina coach Paul Riley, he does like to try new things on set pieces. But I'm not sure why North Carolina doesn't go long there. You have the likes of Lynn Williams in the box. Look to play it in. Look to see if you can find someone on the end of that set piece instead of going short and just allowing Houston Dash to get numbers behind the ball and not getting any opportunity off of that set piece. Chance in the box. Dabinia stays with it. It floats back and around the edge of the goal just barely as Meredith Speck shakes her head. The former three-time first team all Ivy at Yale just missing.
Here is Kaylee Kurtz. Stayed patient that time, managed to get it past the pesky groom. Shea Groom back on the ball now though. He's gonna probably wait for some help from her Houston teammates, slips up a bit. Malay coming back defensively to help for North Carolina, does not matter. Christy Mewis, hello. Oh. A mighty strike there from Mewis. What a strike from Christy Mewis, just finds herself out wide left on her favorite left foot, just strikes that low into the far corner. But this all starts from picking the pocket of Roquero. She chooses to play a ball. It's caught in transition. They find space in between that midfield and back line to attack. And then Shea Groom and Christy Mewis that link up. And then this is a wonderful strike. Christy Mewis just hits it first time. Only place she can hit it is right there, catches LeBay on that near post. These are the moments where North Carolina can continue to grow, be patient in their attack, in their buildup. If you give the balls away that we're just seeing right here, then it allows for Houston Dash to be able to have numbers up situations in advanced positions, and then you're caught in 3v3 situations and leaves North Carolina very vulnerable. Especially in this 3-1-4-2 formation, Jen, you have to be patient in your buildup, move the ball quickly side to side and look for the overloads out wide. But if you give away easy giveaways, can leave you exposed in the back. Houston wanted to try to carry some momentum over Lori from that Challenge Cup championship run. And certainly, as we mentioned, they have far fewer changes than what North Carolina does in this fall series. It looks like it with the way that they're playing, how connected they are. It's been a solid 40 minutes defensively, staying compact, doing well, winning your individual battles and then just looking for those opportunities to expose those back three for North Carolina. And really credit to Chrissy Mewis, Shea Groom, and Nichelle Prince up top for the defensive work to make it so predictable for themselves to create easy opportunities on goal. So much to like about what that Houston attack presents with those players you just talked about. Yes, even without a Rachel Daly. And I think that was some of their motivation. Heard some of the players talk this week as well as James Clarkson and wanting to prove that they are not a one woman show when it comes to Daly, who was named the tournament MVP at the Challenge Cup and the Golden Boot winner. That they had more than just Rachel in their attack and they're proving that they've looked dangerous and you add that to a defense that was so good. Mentioned those three straight shutouts. They went 344 consecutive minutes without allowing a goal in the Challenge Cup. That was a club record. And then they add some of the spice in the attack. And this is where they wanted to find Shea Groom and Christy Mewis just in advanced positions in between that back line and midfield line for North Carolina. And it is those two midfielders that link up. And it's Christy Mewis with the first time Chance on goal and makes no mistakes about it. Finds the back of the net, catches LeBay going one way and just slots it past her near post. Chapman, remember, is already on a yellow card. We saw one red card handed out in the earlier NWSL match today. Savannah McCaskill for Chicago picked up her second yellow and so was ejected in the first half of that match for the Red Stars against the Washington Spirit. I'll have all the highlights of that match to show you coming up at halftime. Point being, Chapman needs to be careful. That's not really in her nature. <laughs> it's not, especially when you're <laughs> playing against your former club and it could potentially be your first win against them. Oh, you're just adding fuel to the fire, <laughs> Lori, although those are two very good points. Chapman did have a brief spell with the North Carolina Courage. Goes back 2018. 
Harris Hanson plenty of time and space to pick out her target. And why wouldn't you look for number 19? Mewis, your goal scorer from a moment ago. Christy Mewis a little too over ambitious trying to get back on that ball. Runs over Ricaro. Coming into this game, Jen, one of the areas was that midfield battle that we were looking at. Who could win that we felt like would be the most successful team. And so far it has been Houston Das, Sophie Schmidt doing a good job of screening the back line, making sure that Dabinia and Lauren Millay don't get on the ball easily. And we haven't called their name except for the opportunity that Dabinia got into the box and able to draw the penalty kick. Something that Paul Riley will have to look at going into the second half. How can they move the ball quicker? Once they switch to the point of attack, can they be patient, swing it again, look to pull Houston Dash out of their shape? Right now it's too pragmatic and predictable for Houston to be able to get pressure on the ball. I know you said that Paul Riley is determined to give this formation a try, this 3-1-4-2 that he's rolling out in this fall series. Do you think we might see some changes in game though? Do you anticipate anything in the second half being different as that is another turnover by North Carolina? We'll see what Houston does with it. I don't see formation changes coming, but I do see potential personnel changes, but also just the way that they're approaching this game. One thing that North Carolina has built their foundation on is high press, getting after teams, making it difficult for them to play against. You can see they're a bit out of sorts, haven't built that confidence in this formation, so they're not even using their defensive pressure to put Houston Dash under pressure. Some more pressure in the back for North Carolina. Latsko slides onto the ball. And that's great awareness to be able to play that long ball because Houston Dash found themselves in a 2v2 situation with North, North Carolina right in the box. Show some versatility and variety in their attack. Look to link play with Che Groom and Christy Mewis, but also can you serve long balls, force North Carolina to defend in their own defensive third? Schmidt, the pressure of North Carolina takes that pass away from her. Will stay with the courage for the throw. Deep throw here for Meredith Speck to set up. Just 76 minutes played for Speck in the Challenge Cup. Gonna get a lot more than that in this fall series, you would imagine. She will allow Kaylee Kurtz to come over and take the throw. Ball bounces back to Kurtz. Good tenacity has to keep that alive. North Carolina will try again. Davinia just had it stolen off her foot by Schmidt. Chapman. Full speed ahead for Houston on the far side. Finds Groom in the middle. Minimum of five minutes of stoppage time added on to our first half. North Carolina Courage have been so dominant since that franchise had its first year in 2017. A lot of those players Moved over from the Western New York Flash. Paul Riley was there as the head coach of that club as well as they were NWSL champions in 2016. Then they came to North Carolina, have just been nothing but win, Lori, since they've come to carry three regular season titles, two NWSL championships. Not quite looking their dominant selves in this match, and that's okay, as there certainly is some experimentation going on. It is okay, but one of the things that they can clean up themselves is just the movement off the ball. Right now, it's too slow. They, a good switch point of attack. 
but then no movement off the ball to be able to unbalance Houston's defense. Houston more committed to def them defensively shifting quicker, not enough support once North Carolina gets on the ball. Dabinia stopped in her tracks. Groom waiting out her options. We'll play it forward for Latsko. Times it right. Andrew Jeske, a few inches away. Offside flag goes up anyway. How about that play from Latsko and Groom to get her there? Well, if there's any question about Shea Groom and even Christy Mewis come into this game and be able to replicate their performances that they had in the Challenge Cup. They have answered those questions. Just a quick one-two in the middle of the park to initiate this attack, to be able to find Veronica Latsko wide open on the outside of those three center backs for North Carolina. So much time and space. Andrew Jessica's got to be able to time a run better to stay on side when you have that type of opportunity right in front of the goal. But another good buildup, but also just too easy from North Carolina. Latsko, by the way, who had the first goal for Houston in this match, appeared in all seven matches of the Challenge Cup for Houston, started two of them, had an assist, and getting the nod in this first fall series match for Houston. We weren't quite sure when we talked to James Clarkson yesterday. He wasn't even quite sure at that point. <laughs> Had another staff meeting still to determine who he might put up there. He knew Michelle Prince would be there, but he wasn't sure who the other two attackers would be. And we talked about North Carolina getting a lot of opportunities for their players and minutes that they wouldn't typically get. But the same with Houston Dash. They were committed to their starting lineup. A few changes each game. But other than that, were very consistent with the players they went with on their search for that title in the Challenge Cup. But... James Clarkson said all of those players will get minutes and starts throughout this fall series. And he felt like those players that didn't get many minutes in the Challenge Cup were integral to the team winning. Their mental toughness, just the support of the players out in the field really kept the glue together. Lynn Williams has to be desperate for more touches for North Carolina. They've been few and far between. Groom has been all over the place for Houston. And Nichelle Prince continues to look dangerous. Across it goes. Oh, she is just doing all she can to set up her teammates. It is Let's Go that time that can't connect. And it is the exact same play over and over. Nichelle Prince finds space on the outside of those center backs. North Carolina is all out of sorts. She takes players on, loads of space to take on this back line. And then it's Latsko that's coming through the midfield. No one picks her up. She can't make connection with that final pass from Nichelle Prince. And those are the areas, though, for Houston Dash. They're starting to get these opportunities that they are going to want to put, put away to pull away from North Carolina because I imagine Paul Riley will not be happy with this performance regardless of personnel or formation changes. North Carolina looking for something before that first half whistle sounds. Offside negates that attempt. Lynn Williams, a former NWSL Golden Boot winner and MVP in this league. Her team, though, trailing the Houston Dash two to one after our first half. Pretty entertaining 45 minutes in carry. Well, we knew that it could be back and forth, wide open in the midfield, and it certainly has. Houston Dash getting off on that front foot quickly. But then it'd be North Carolina getting on the board first and back and forth. But then Houston Dash has just taken over the last 15, 20 minutes with their defensive presence that allowed for them to be dangerous in the attack. Back-to-back -back goals by the Dash. Let's go in the 25th minute. Christy Mewis in the 37th minute. And Shea Groom setting up both of those. That attack for Houston certainly causing some problems to this reconfigured backline for the North Carolina Courage. 
Still more of this story to unfold, though, in the second half as we will watch and see how these two teams adapt, adjust, perhaps make some changes looking toward the second half. Marissa Pilla working hard right now, trying to catch up with Christy Mewis, something that <laughs> North Carolina had trouble with. You can hear Christy say, I'm coming. <laughs> now she is with Marissa. Christy, your goal gave the team the lead heading into halftime. Why have you been able to expose North Carolina's defense? Um, I think one thing that we've been working on a lot is getting our first pass forward right after we win it because that's when they're the most susceptible. So I think we've done a really good job with that, but I think we can do an even better job. Thanks for your time. Champions in Cary, North Carolina. Two to one is our score. Coming up at halftime, we'll look at some of the other action around the league in the NWSL. Welcome back to Cary, North Carolina, just outside Raleigh. It is halftime in our NWSL game of the week between Houston Dash and the North Carolina Courage. Catching you up on some of the other action from our NWSL Fall Series. Lori, we're quite familiar with this game, having called it. It was our first one last week, and Sky Blue FC getting the first one in this matchup. And they would get off the front start quickly. It would be Anamana leading the way, picking the pocket of Sam Staub, and then making no mistakes about it with this goal, firing it to that upper corner. And then it would be the Washington Spirit getting back into the game in the second half. The substitutes coming on, making a big difference. It's Scarpa that draws the penalty kick. And then Paige Nielsen step up, fires this one home low into that far corner. Not done yet, though. Well, U.S. International Mal Pugh playing in her first game with Sky Blue against her old club. Washington Spirit plays a beautiful ball into the perfectly timed run by Midge Purse. All she has to do is take one touch and then slot it past outreaching Aubrey Bledsoe. So a stoppage time game winner for Midge Purse and Sky Blue FC. Remember that phrase, because we just might see it again in our game from earlier today with Chicago, who would get off to the good start. And this would be Chicago's first game of the fall series. Watt does a good job of finding some space, and this is a decent ball in behind, a lot looking for Luber, who just has to hit that one first time. But this would be the change, the momentum change in the game. McCaskill shown her second yellow card to allow Washington Spirit to work their way back into the game. And this is what would happen. Bailey Feist does well to take this Good first touch, no one clears it for Chicago and she just slides once it more than the Chicago defenders. An assistant touch here that sets her up and then finds the upper pocket. Stoppage time was where Washington lost the game last week. How about this week, Lori? A little bit better results. And Crystal Thomas working her magic in and out and then finds Scarpa in the 91st minute game winner. You can see what this game means and that win means to that young Washington Spirit team. So that is all of the action so far. When we come back, we will break down our first half from Kerry. Tomorrow, the NFL on CBS begins the journey to Super Bowl 55 with a full slate of games, including Cam Newton's Patriots debut, the Panthers hosting the Raiders and MVP Lamar Jackson and the Ravens battling the Browns. Plus, top pick Joe Burrow makes his first career start with the Bengals. It all starts tomorrow at noon Eastern with the NFL Today here on CBS. We are at halftime of our NWSL game of the week. Two to one, our score with the Houston Dash leading the North Carolina Courage from Cary, North Carolina. Jen Hildreth, former U.S. national team midfielder, Lori Lindsay. And as I said, we got a pretty entertaining first half there, Lori. We weren't quite sure what we'd get. Well, Hughes and Dash started right where they left off of winning that Challenge Cup, got off on the front foot, created a few chances themselves, and then North Carolina, though, getting on board first, doing what they do best, making runs out of the midfield. But both teams still very much in this game, 2-1 for Houston Dash. But Houston Dash looking really well in this first half of this game. As you mentioned, though, despite Houston really having the advantage, it was that foul right there that earned a yellow card for Chapman and got a penalty kick for North Carolina. And it'd be the captain, U.S. International, Abby Dahlkin, for stepping up at the spot, making no mistakes about it, going the other way from 
Uh, Jane Campbell had no chance to make that save on that penalty. But Houston, though, pouncing on an error in the back from Dahlkemper and the Courage. And it would be Shea Groom that picks Dahlkemper's back pocket and then just lays it off to the Veronica Latsko for the tap in. Really good defensive pressure from the two of them to be able to just create this simple chance and it's exactly what the Houston Dash would want. Opportunities off their defensive pressure. Shea Groom setting up that goal for Latsko. She was not done setting up her teammates in the first half. And then this time it'd be the two center mids with Shea Groom and Christy Mewis linking up for this pass. A quick little one-two allows for Christy Mewis to be able to find some space on that left-handed side on her favored left foot and just slots it home first time, catches LeBay on that near post as she's starting to dive to her left. The Houston Dash determined to prove in this NWSL Fall Series that that championship and the Challenge Cup was not a fluke. They outshot North Carolina in the first half, had some more possession, and have the lead. Good possession by the Houston Dash to be able to just turn that possession into opportunities on goal. So 2-1, our scoreline, second half action coming your way from Carey. Welcome back to Cary, North Carolina. Just a few moments away from the start of the second half, the North Carolina Courage trailing at home against the Houston Dash. We are so pleased to continue bringing you NWSL action throughout this fall series. There is your upcoming schedule. A reminder that that Portland OL rain match that was supposed to take place today is moved till Tuesday due to the hazardous air conditions in that area due to the wildfires. And Lori will get a chance to see this North Carolina Courage team again take on the Orlando Pride next week. I'm excited about that game. It'll be the first time we've seen Orlando Pride since last season, unfortunately missing the Challenge Cup this year. But then also Utah Royals taking on the Portland Thorns. The first time we'll see Utah Royals play in a game in this fall series. So exciting matches coming up nonetheless. Abby Dahlkemper got the scoring started in this one, just the third goal of her NWSL career, giving North Carolina the early advantage. Then Veronica Latsko tied things up in the 25th minute, and Christy Mewis putting the Houston Dash out in front, giving them an advantage as they head into the second half. I know we were talking during the break there, Lori, wondering what that locker room conversation was like from Paul Riley. He did make one change. Haley Harbison, number 22, you just saw, has come into the match. Harbison immediately onto the ball, too. She replaced Evans in the attack. Well, welcome to the match. Immediately making her presence felt in that North Carolina attack that needed a little injection of something. Harbison of 5-4. Well, she's listed as a defender. Out of Pepperdine, same alma mater as Lynn Williams. This is her first appearance with the North Carolina Courage as she was hurt all of last year. First corner for the Courage goes by the wayside. And Jen, I guarantee this is what North Carolina coach Paul Riley said to Haley Harbison, to get out on the field, make something happen, run at that back line of the Houston Dash, and let's get out on the front foot. Let's show, show some more urgency and energy in our play. Was the biggest difference regardless of personnel or formation that we saw in North Carolina in that first half was just not looking at themselves in terms of putting Houston under pressure, which has been part of their well, DNA. Yeah, right? exactly. You said it. <laughs> <laughs> the North Carolina Courage typically make life hard for their opponents. I mean, they are a team that comes at you fast and furious. As we mentioned, the three-time Shield winners winning the regular season title in this league. They've won the championship the last two years. And people are starting to throw around that word dynasty for what this Courage team is and could continue to become.
Houston, meanwhile, trying to make some more strides toward changing the perception of what their club can be. As you mentioned, it was not always a place that had the reputation of being somewhere players wanted to come. They've had three different coaches since becoming the league's first expansion team in 2014. But now proving that there is something pretty special brewing in Houston. And you can feel that with their energy, the excitement, the amount of players that have returned since the Challenge Cup that are here playing in the fall series. Just the excitement around James Clarkson and the buy-in of his philosophy and his style of play. There's players that have high ambitions. Christy Mewis to get back on the national team. Shea Groom to continue to make a statement in this league. Dabinia up to the speed. Lynn Williams gets herself a chance, earns North Carolina another corner. We have not seen that speed unleashed from Lynn Williams just yet in this match. And that is an area where she's had a ton of success over the years down that left-hand fl flank. She did have Lauren Malay making a late run into the box, but you could tell that Williams wanted to take it herself, hadn't seen much of the ball in the first half. Dabinia plays it short, gets it back, nicely done, takes it across the face of the goal but out of bounds. Well, we were speculating, Lori, as to what Paul Riley and his staff talked about at halftime. Marissa has more on that. That's right, North Carolina assistant coach Scott Vallow told me the courage need to be sharper in the second half. Haley Harbison checked in to play a wide role in the midfield, and the team made a tactical shift to help defend against Houston's midfield. Furthermore, he said North Carolina needs to get forward Lynn Williams more involved with service in behind. And that requires them to be able to, not only like Paul Riley said, be sharper on the ball, but move the ball quicker, see if they can unbalance Houston's defense, switch the point of attack, and then it'll open up space for Dabini or even Lynn Williams to find in behind that back line or even in front of that back line and in between the midfield. Dabinia, that motor always running for the Brazilian international. Ricaro up to Ryan Williams, looks forward toward Malay. Be a deep throw in for North Carolina. The Courage already with two corner kicks in the second half. They didn't have any in the first half, and that's something we typically see a lot of. They led the Challenge Cup with those corner kick opportunities, something they typically generate at will. This is Prysock. Out to Haley Hansen. And that's good pressure from North Carolina. You can hear Paul Riley saying, go on, go on, put him under pressure. Something we didn't see in that first half. And I'll be interested to see how Houston can deal with that pressure from North Carolina. Will they continue to look to play out through Sophie Schmidt? Or will they look to alleviate pressure and go long and then regroup from there? Either way, we know that pressure, as you mentioned, Jen, comes fast and furious. And Dabinia's shot is also furiously in the back of the net. How quickly did that develop? <laughs> oh my goodness, Dabinia. We have seen this from her before, but every time it gets better and better, gets her head up, gets the ball out from underneath her. She gets it past the defender, just gets it out from underneath her foot and just unleashes that shot. Nothing that Jane Campbell can do, upper 90. Look at the dip on that ball. And this is why she has been the most dominant player in this league for the past few seasons. She can play make, she can set play for her teammates, but then out of nowhere, she can change the course of the game. And what a strike from Dabinia. 
eight goals, seven assists last season for Dabinia. Houston looking for a quick answer, perhaps. And a reminder that that is a hard foul, and that is Chapman. Let's see if the card comes out. It does. That means it is a red card, and Alicia Chapman's day is done. Houston now will have to play the remainder of this match with 10. And there was no reason for Alicia Chapman to go this hard into this, this tackle, knowing that she's on a yellow card. This changes the course of the game. Houston Dash finishing this game down a player. Lauren Millay, no help, no one around in their defensive third, just stand her up, force her to go back. Instead goes in, leaves her feet, gets the yellow card, now puts her team in an interesting position, playing down a player. And this goes back to my point late in that first half, Jen, about Houston Dash not putting away the chances that were easy tap-ins in that final half of the first half. You allow North Carolina to creep back into this game. Dabinia doing what she does best, work her magic, and now you're down a player. Two NWSL fall series matches today. Two red cards handed out. And Savannah McCaskill also received two yellows for the Chicago Red Stars in their match against the Washington Spirit earlier today, one that the Spirit wound up winning in stoppage time. Ryan Williams had her progress halted. And by two experienced players that know better in terms of managing the game, knowing that they're on yellow cards, knowing that not every team is fully fit, ebbs and flows to this season. So just manage the game, knowing that you can still have an impact. You don't have to go in hard. Put yourself and your team in precarious positions. Dabinia has that look, Lori, like she's in that mode of taking over. We've seen it happen before, the championship game MVP in the NWSL a year ago. Just had the goal to tie this match for North Carolina. And Jen, with that red car ejection from Alicia Chapman, we'll see Andrew Jeske move back to that left back position, was as a playing as a striker having to change their formation. And that's something Andrew Jeske has some experience with. You and I both got to call several of her matches throughout her career at the University of North Carolina. Hanson Dorrance, no stranger to moving players around either. And Andrew Jeske played some defense for the Tar Heels. She was a part of three college cups in her time with North Carolina. So with that move with Andrew Jeske, they'll look to just Houston Dash to play with the two front runners, Veronica Latsko and Nichelle Prince. And if they split the difference in occupying the defenders for North Carolina, it'll still allow that space for Shea Groom and Christy Mewis to occupy going forward. Lynn Williams offside for North Carolina. All the teams this fall in the NWSL playing for the Verizon Community Shield so each team will play four total matches to each against the two other players in their regional pod. And then at the end of that, the team with the most points will be able to have a grant awarded to a community partner of their choice. That money provided by Verizon. Orlando, the other team in this south region, along with Houston and North Carolina. As we mentioned, we'll get a chance to see the pride next week on CBS. Oh, nice look to find a wide open Malay for North Carolina. Williams in the box and some last minute defending. Well done by Allie Prysock to get back and cover that. And that was the best sequence by North Carolina so far in this game. 
Meredith Speck does a good job of reading the play, wins the ball in the midfield and drives with the ball and finds Malay out wide who bends this ball into the path of Lynn Williams, gets a toe poke on it, but just trickles over the inline. But that's the glimpses of North Carolina that we're used to seeing. Quick transitional play, win from their defensive pressure, and then they're off and running and finding overloads in the attacking third. Couple of changes, you see Katie Stengel, Aaron Simon both coming in. So the Andrew Jeske experiment on defense is over as Aaron Simon, a player who started three matches in the Challenge Cup for Houston on defense. Stengel replacing Latsko in the attack. Each team allowed five substitutions in this fall series. And that Stengel substitution, Jen, will give the Houston Dash a bit of a different look going forward, more of a hold-up player, can get turned and take on 1v1, but looks to link. And that'll allow for Shea Groom and Christy Mewis to be able to still make those runs and get in more advanced positions when they connect in the attacking half. Great distribution. Always available from Jane Campbell, her team offside that time. Jane Campbell, the only goalkeeper in the NWSL to have an assist to her name. And she actually did that against North Carolina back in 2018. Now, there is, however, an NWSL goalkeeper who has a goal. You know the answer to this trivia, Lori? Portland Thorns back in the day? Yes, I do. Michelle Betos. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> Dramatic goal for Betos, who came up to head in a goal late for her Portland team against FC Kansas City. And remind me, that was a header goal. It was, right? yep. yes. A beautiful header goal, <laughs> mind you. <laughs> Gotta love those goalkeeper offensive stats. Give them a little <laughs> love when you get them. So some things reconfigured a bit for Houston with the ejection of Alicia Chapman picking up her second yellow card. Ball across is certainly one that looked like it had some potential. Abe takes it away. Dabinia trying to get that timing right with Williams just off again. It was close. And that was a close call, Jen. It looked like Aaron Simon at the last minute had kept Lynn Williams on. But that's the connection that North Carolina wants. Dabinia playing those through balls into the onrushing. Lynn Williams, who's reading the, the play and the space in behind that back line for Houston Dash so well. Williams tried a back heel flick over to Dabinia. Spin on that ball. Did not help her out. There's an area that the Houston Dash will want to keep an eye on, especially with only playing with 10 players. Not leaving Sophie Schmidt isolated 2v1 with Dabinia and Malay flanking her, allow, being able to get turned up and play those through balls into the onrushing Lynn Williams. Make sure they get compact defensively, draw players back, don't give any space in between the lines. Here comes Dabinia again. Ryan Williams ready and waiting. Back into the middle she goes, and it is missed. A beautiful setup there from Ryan Williams, but the Courage unable to cash it in. And Ryan Williams and the North Carolina Courage starting to find some wide open space on that right-hand side. And this is the right idea from Ryan Williams to go first time across. Would have slowed down the play and the runs from North Carolina if she took an extra touch. Malay couldn't make connection on it. Stangle has a touch, not to her liking. Ricaro up the middle. 
for Dabinia. You know she will unleash it from distance. We've seen it already in this match. Here is Malay looking toward that far upper 90, but a little low on the delivery. And one of the differences in this second half, Jen, is Carrie Ricaro in the midfield position, number 21, playing forward passes more often, getting on the half turn, looking to play the attackers like Dabini and Lynn Williams to be able to get them in the play more. We didn't see that very much in the first half, always playing backwards or couldn't get her on the ball. She's doing a much better job of making herself available in that midfield position. That's a great point, Lori, and, and figuring out exactly how North Carolina has been able to get some more looks. And Lynn Williams has certainly been more involved. Dabinia has been more involved. And how North Carolina is playing through the midfield, the big reason why. Here is Stangle, former Wake Forest product. Over to Prince, who's been much quieter this second half. The defense for North Carolina, or perhaps it's just the fact that they've had a bit more offense, a bit more possession has kept that Houston attack from becoming too dangerous. Houston has to make sure that they stay connected defensively though, because that midfield is wide open right now. So much room for Dabinia to be able to get on the ball in transition. That back line for Houston Dash dropping so early. So much room for the midfielders and too much room for Houston Dash's midfield to occupy. Shea Groom assisted both Houston goals in the first half. One to Latsko in the 25th minute, one to Christy Mewis in the 37th minute. Groom, 90 appearances in her NWSL career. This her first year though with the Houston Dash. Talked about wanting to continue to play a big role for this team as she did when she was also in the running for the Golden Boot in the Challenge Cup. Schmidt saw Williams lurking over her shoulder. Hansen, persistent. Pushes it across, LaBay able to just get a hand and tap it away. Stengel. Back into the middle for Groom. Could have used a bit more pace. Couldn't generate much the way she leapt for that one. Prince, right along that line of the 18 yard box, turns it over. Here is Ricaro, the player you mentioned, a little more forward thinking. Had to play it back that time toward Dahl Kemper. But her initial pass was toward the attack. Harbison, two-time defensive player of the year at Pepperdine. Graduated there in 2018. her ACL before the season last year after being the number nine pick in the 2019 draft by the Courage. Now being utilized in a more offensive role. Kurtz can get some distance on that throw. Perhaps not quite as much as we're used to seeing from someone like a Jess McDonald who has Pretty famous <laughs> in the NWSL in particular <laughs> for that long throw in, but Kurtz with that ability as well. Harbison into the gloves of Campbell. Yeah. 
This, of course, an NWSL season unlike any other, as we're seeing changes in all of the sports leagues across the country. You're going to get a chance to see NFL in action this week as Recaro steps forward. Big games coming up on CBS tomorrow. Okay. But for the NWSL, typically this is a league that plays 24 games in their regular season. This year, they became the first professional team sport to return to action in the United States following the COVID-19 pandemic when they staged the Challenge Cup out in Utah for a month. Now this second rendition of play, the NWSL Fall Series, giving teams and players a chance to get back out in the field. And everyone we've talked to has been very appreciative of the league finding a way to create this opportunity for games, albeit in an unconventional style and format with the regional pods that have been set up. And every coach and player has talked about the importance of the games getting minutes to continue to improve. One thing that we've talked about is expansion draft coming, Jen, and opportunities that's going to allow for players, but also these games showing players the, the need to prove themselves to stay with their club. Expansion is looming in the NWSL. Racing Louisville coming into the fold next year. We also know the Angel City group out in LA coming to the NWSL in 2022. <laughs> Sophie Schmidt limping a bit as she gets to her feet for Houston. James Clarkson, so long a part of the Houston Dynamo program. It was over a decade there with that club, with their academy and MLS, director of youth development. Also a longtime coach at the youth level. Lived in Houston for over 20 years now. It was born in England. Both of our coaches on the sideline today, England natives. The feel of the second half, Lori, just seems different than the first. Well, it has been the tale of two halves, essentially. Houston Dash being on the front foot the entire. It's a great touch, and the shot! Oh, there go the Houston Dash again. Just as we were about to say, it felt different. Houston slots it home and goes back out in front. And that's exactly right, Jen. Just when I said it felt like North Carolina was on the front foot this half, this is the play that happens. And it's Sophie Schmidt gets the Houston dash on the board, does well to play underneath Stangle. This is what we're talking about in terms of Stangle being able to hold up play, does well to keep this one alive. And it's that touch there from Sophie Schmidt that allows this herd herself to get it out from underneath her, set herself up, and then just bends that into the far post against her Canadian teammate, Steph LeBay. Such great composure from Schmidt there. Taking that shot, 70th minute goal, putting Houston back out in front three to two. And I was looking at halftime. North Carolina, Lori, has only given up three goals in a match once in the last two years, none at all last season. Unbelievable. And it just goes back to what we've been talking about is the, the ebbs and flows, the trials and tribulations of playing in this new formation. But credit to Sophie Schmidt on that play, getting herself in a more advanced position, has really sat home this entire game, screening that back four for the dash, but reads that play off a of stangle well. And it was that first touch to set herself up to get herself some time and space away from the North Carolina defenders to unleash that shot. Schmidt with eight goals in her NWSL career. But the last of those coming back in 2014, she played with Sky Blue FC in 2013 and 2014, then went away, played in Germany returning to the NWSL last season with Houston. Didn't look rusty at all with her goal scoring form <laughs> on that attempt though. 
When it goes back to what we've been talking about with James Clarkson as well and the buy-in from his players, we're seeing Sophie Schmidt step up, we're seeing Christy Mewis, Shake Room, Nichelle Prince, these players that are starting to shine and, and show their personalities under this system. Dabinia standing over this free kick for North Carolina. Has Malay cutting into the area. Dabinia will put it toward that near post. That'll set up a corner for the Courage, their third of this half. A lot of the traditional targets for North Carolina not in this match. So trying out some new options. Can they create something with the short passing play? They try to hear Dahl Kemper, who scored in the first half from the penalty spot. Mewis let that ball ride a little too far. Ryan Williams took it back for North Carolina. Lynn Williams will get onto this for the Courage. Taps it over to Dabinia. Who wants it? Malay will look back to Dabinia and Prysock and the defense for Houston getting in the way just enough. I like that connection from Malay and Dabinia though. I thought Malay was going to play the ball down the line to Lynn Williams, but I think she read that she was offside, so opted to play a little chip ball in behind. Good idea, and that's what you want, the linkage interchange between those players coming out of the midfield. You felt, Lori, like momentum was on the side of North Carolina, especially with Alicia Chapman going out and forcing Houston to play a player down. But that goal, all of a sudden, makes Houston feel a little <laughs> bit better about the way things are going. And they've done well to make adjustments when Alicia Chapman was shown the red card, get back defensively, but still create attacking opportunities. And you could argue that North Carolina hasn't done enough in the attack to take advantage of some of the opportunities they've had. This is the second hydration break of the match coming up. As we said at the outset, these were pre-scheduled and predetermined that there would be hydration breaks in all of the NWSL Fall Series matches. Heard our good friend Mike Watts talking about that in the NWSL match on Twitch earlier today, that this was partly because the players all have individualized water bottles now. There can be no sharing. They have to make sure that everybody gets back to the sideline to get their particular source of hydration. Well, things are heating up in the Big Brother house. The All-Star house guests are bringing the drama. Watch a new episode of Big Brother All-Stars tomorrow on CBS and catch up anytime on CBS All Access. Speaking of drama, Lori, we've had some goal scoring in this match, including Dabinia finding a way to equalize in the 52nd. And take a bow, Dabinia, what a strike. It was North Carolina getting off onto a strong start, and Dabinia finding the back of the net on that one. But then, just as you think North Carolina is going to start to take over, it's Sophie Schmidt that does well reading the play off of Stangle. Great first touch to get it out from underneath her and just bend that past the out, outrising stretch, LeBay. Houston and Schmidt proven they're not going anywhere. The dash leading it 3-2 as we get ready to resume play from Cary, North Carolina. Katie Stengel, one of the changes off the bench coming into the attack. Both Veronica Latsko and Bridget Andrzejewski who started the match on the bench now. Nichelle Prince, who was very active in the first half, hasn't had quite as much of an impact since that halftime break. There is Schmidt, slotted home that beautiful goal, the go-ahead goal for Houston in the 70th minute. And she's had a really solid game just occupying that central area for the Houston Dash with North Carolina's ability to catch teams on transition. She's done well to break up a lot of plays 
not allowing them to get on the front foot, especially in that first half, and then found herself in a more advanced role to be able to get into the attack and score the goal. Hansen looking up, trying to play it inside towards Stengel. Ricaro. That slip could provide an opportunity for Dabinia. North Carolina will have to regroup. Speck trying to work it with Harbison. Kurtz on the ground back to Dabinia. The shot is too high from Speck. Another substitution for the Courage is another one of these players just announced this week as having signed a short-term contract with the club, Riley Baisden. 5-3 forward out of California, also played at Pepperdine, and will come in to replace Malay. And I think Paul Riley was telling the story when asked where he found some of these players for short term because he had several players on his club opt out. That was an option for all NWSL players for this fall series. And apparently he asked and Lynn Williams said, hey, I know this player, Riley Baston. So Paul Riley took a look, apparently liked what he <laughs> saw because here she is making her NWSL debut. Based and graduated from Pepperdine in 2016. Dahl Kemper making a run into the attack for North Carolina. And yet, this is something we haven't seen yet is Dahl Kemper coming out of that center back position, making overlapping runs. But it is something that Paul Riley talked about. As they get more familiar and comfortable with this formation, they will see players making runs out of the back line and require other players to shift around and make sure that they have cover defensively. But the biggest difference between this formation and the box formation that we're so accustomed to seeing with North Carolina is the ability to use the width. It's been too predictable so far in this game for North Carolina. I imagine that'll be something that Paul Riley and his team will look at going into next week's match. Just being able to create opportunities for those wingbacks to get in more advanced positions to unbalance the opposing team. So much of their play has been central and it's been too predictable and pragmatic and easy essentially for Houston Dash to defend. Prince has Mewis making a run. Mewis holds up to stay on side. Prince stays with it. Looked to be pulled down from behind by Ricaro just on first glance. And that is going to be pretty much straight on from just outside the area. And we haven't called Nichelle Prince's name much in this half, but every time she does get on the ball, she makes something happen. This time forcing Ricaro to bring her down. Ricaro seeing that they're going to be exposed on that left-hand side with Mewis wide open. Time and time again, North Carolina vulnerable defensively when Houston Dash starts getting running at them and at that back line. Schmidt, Mewis, and Groom have all combined in one way or another to score for Houston in this match. Groom providing two assists. They're all over the ball now for the Dash. Ball right into the wall, which does its job. The second opportunity goes wide. Some substitutions coming for the dash. So both Groom and Prince will make their way to the sideline while Jamia Fields, number 24, and Christine Nair, number 10, will come into the match for Houston. 
I mean, this certainly changes the fabric of the attack in particular for the Dash. Well, it also shows there the development and evolution of this club. You're bringing on Christine Nairn, so much experience in the NWSL coming off the bench, being able to help close out this game with her ability to keep possession in the midfield. And then Jamia Fields being able to get some minutes, showing what she's capable of in terms of taking players on. This is something that the Houston Dash hasn't had in the past, being able to bring on difference makers and then the depth of their team. What a day for Shea Groom, assisting on both Houston goals in the first half. Chance for North Carolina. This is Bayesden. Over to Williams, and North Carolina has tied it. Hey, Jed, you said it moments ago. There's always some dramatics when it comes to North Carolina. And here it is again, late in this half. Bays in the substitute coming in, and they've seen this space on the right hand side open up time and time again, especially in the second half. Bazin does well to take the space, get in line. Lynn Williams timing her run well, makes good connection, and finds that far post. So often, Lori, the knock on Lynn Williams is that she does not finish enough of her chances. The credit on the other side of that is how much she often creates chances this game. Totally different story. She's not had hardly any, and that one, she took her time, looked very composed in front of the goal. In the other area that she's been working on that Paul Riley talked to us about was the calmness in front of goal. She does create chances, create chances out of nothing, and yet sometimes doesn't take that opportunity. Now, composed in front of goal, just making good connection, redirecting the balls that are played into her. Williams tries her luck again. A good look at Williams making her run, just timing her run. All she has to do is separate herself. It's too easy defensively. You see Schmidt, you see Naughton not picking her up. When you get into the box, you've got to get touch tight, especially on an attacker like Lynn Williams. It's a good ball in from Bayesden, but too easy defensively. Get a body on her. Don't let her get a good look on frame. But credit to Lynn Williams for slowing herself down and just making good connection to find the back of the net. With her speed, with as prolific a scorer as she has been in this league, she's been in and out of the U.S. national team picture. New head coach Vladko Andonovsky has called her into camp. You think this is a huge opportunity now for Lynn Williams to get off that bubble, if you will, and get into the national team picture if she can continue to finish like that in this fall series. It really has, and it's been fun to watch the evolution of her game being able to use her athleticism and skill to get in behind, making it so difficult for defenders to stay with her. But now seeing more components of her game come in, helping create chances for others, staying in and around the box where she can be most lethal and just finish opportunities that are created from her teammates. And that versatility in that attacking third just prove dividends going forward at an even higher level, the international level. We're just getting word, by the way, that that connection between Bayston and Williams, not only did Lynn Williams kind of put a bug in the ear of Paul Riley about Bayston, but they were roommates in college. Our intrepid reporter, Marissa, <laughs> passing along that information from the sideline. Bayston playing the good ball in and saying, thank you very much for the call up, Lynn Williams. The shot and the fall. Oh, the goal scoring is not done in North Carolina. Dabinia does it again. And this is what makes Dabinia so special. Just a ability to put her chances away. Again, first time, does so well to get over the ball, adjust her footing to keep this ball low. It can Gets around it to be able to bend it far post. Not an easy opportunity. She has players rushing at her. Just slots it to that far post. 
Two fantastic goals from the Brazilian international. I know that we are technically in the South Pod for the NWSL Fall Series, but this feels like the wild, wild west out here <laughs> with all this scoring. Houston is down a player, and North Carolina, boy, they have taken advantage, looking much more dangerous in their attack. And the Houston Dash have gotten so many things right, but when it's come to that defensive third, just making sure they get tight on some of these players that we know can make a difference. Lynn Williams on her goal moments ago in the box, and then Dabinia not closing her down quick enough. They've allowed North Carolina to hang around and find themselves up four to three late in this game. I don't actually know the last time I called the game with seven goals. <laughs> <It's> amazing. <laughs> I don't even know if we're finished. <laughs> I, well, look, we've had two other matches played in this NWSL Fall Series. Both of them were decided with stoppage time goals, so don't go away. <laughs> we, we may not be done. Houston Dash trying to, well, right now, trying to just get it back level, but this is a club in North Carolina that Houston has just been unable to beat. Eight previous meetings, seven losses, one draw. And their last meeting was just a one nothing decision, quite different than this goal fest we've had. But sometimes that can be a big mental hurdle too, and one that you know Houston is wanting to get over so you get over that aura that intensity the reputation of this north carolina club and right now regardless of how this game ends in terms of the score line houston will take some pauses away from this game on both sides of the ball dabinia is going to waste a little time draw some defenders her way in the corner she managed it well Two goals for the Brazilian international in her fall series debut. Was named to the best 11 and was fourth in MVP voting in the Challenge Cup, Dabinha. Ricaro. You know, anytime we have hydration breaks, you will have stoppage time added on. In this fall series, there is no extra time. If Houston does find a way to tie things up, it would end in a tie. That would be a point to each team. You get three points for a victory. Here's Jumia Fields. On the ground, Mewis waiting for it in there. Now it's Nairn. Christine Nairn, you talked about a player with experience. She's been in this league since the first year in 2013. She's been with four different teams over the course of those eight years. This is her second year with the Dash. 29-year-old out of Penn State. One of the best all-time there, especially in terms of assists. Number two all-time when she graduated from the Nittany Lions. <laughs> Minimum of four minutes of stoppage time tacked on here. First game of the fall series. Saw Midge Purse for Sky Blue FC score a top it, stop, <laughs> stop its time goal. We understand. <laughs> to, give, to give her team the win over the Washington Spirit. And then earlier today it was the Washington Spirit who had a stoppage time winner to get a victory. Jesse Scarpa scoring her first NWSL goal to get the win for the Spirit over the Red Stars. 
clearly we are ready to come to the end of the game as I no longer found the ability to enunciate my words. <laughs> I need a hydration break. <laughs> We do have plenty of post-game content coming your way, though. Hang out with us. Marissa will be busy trying to track down some interviews, socially distanced on the field. Fields forces a punch out of LaBay. Now some transition for North Carolina. Dabinia might just go waste some time again with the ball in the corner. She is wily, very experienced. Does that. Davinia, 28 years old, has her 29th birthday coming up in October. Speaking of coming up, LaBay coming out to deliver some instructions. And now it's keep away. Smart play by Davinia initially. Just to slow things down, waste as much time as possible. Need to be careful in that corner spot not allow Houston to come in and get a tackle in at the same time closing out the game. And this is what you want from your two players, just the understanding of how gamesmanship, how to close out games, slow things down, and not give Houston Dash, who have been opportunistic in this game, an opportunity on goal at the other end. And no surprise either that it's those two players exactly. right there who Paul Riley is making sure are getting on the ball to who know how to manage a game. They've played a lot of them. And really when you think about the opportunities that players have, this is what they're looking at. This is what you want to learn from is the management of games. Competition is so stiff in this league, little details that separate the teams. So you've got to find ways. And when you have leaders like Lynn Williams and Dabinia on the field that can put goals in the back of the net, but also understand defensively and the ebbs and flows of the game. Such an incredible learning experience for a lot of these younger players. Hansen got around Harbison and it will be a corner for Houston. Mewis will hustle over to try to take it give her team this opportunity this is the first corner of the second half for the dash they had two in the first half Mewis has wonderful delivery from the corner this one toward the far post but it was North Carolina that won it in the air we are now past that four minutes expect the whistle any time now for Matt Franz One of the things you said, Lori, that North Carolina, even with many new faces, even with a new formation, North Carolina is still North Carolina. They find a way to get four goals in this match and come back to beat the Houston Dash 4-3. And regardless of personnel, the formations that you're playing, the principles of North Carolina will always stay the same. And that's about finding the back of the net, making it difficult for other teams to play against. And we didn't see that much of them, the, the typical North Carolina in that first half, but we certainly saw it in the second. And as the big time players like Dabinia and Lynn Williams that put this game away for North Carolina. Lynn Williams with a goal and an assist in this match. And she is standing by with Marissa. Lynn, you scored the equalizing goal for your team in the second half. What did you see when Bayesden went out wide that allowed you to get in the right space in the 18? Yeah, um, they were all dropping into their box, so I said I've got to change my angle. Um, I think all game long I was crowding the space a bit too much, so I was just trying to hold my run a bit more. Um, and it opened up, thank God. <laughs> you said before this game you wanted to work on your finishing. How did you refine that today? Yeah, I didn't really get that many chances, um, but I felt like I put away the one that I did get, and so I'm proud of that. Your team scored two goals within three minutes, the equalizer <laughs> and the game winner. What opened up offensively late in the game? Yeah, I think we're just fighters, you know. Um, the game was going back and forth a lot, and we were giving up some passes, some easy passes. Um, 
but that's okay. We're, we're working on things, but I think that you saw that we're just going to fight until the whistle blows, and that's what we did. And we saw a new identity to the North Carolina Courage State with so many new faces. <laughs> what did this result There's speak to that? Yeah, our bench is very deep, North you know, Carolina. and the people that got a chance tonight to start, they've been working for years, um, making the starting lineup normally better. And so I'm just happy that everybody got a chance to get out there and prove to the world what they can do as well. Thanks for your time. Congrats. Thank you. Am I good? <laughs> okay. An assist there as well and a victory for her team. And it is a job well done for Lynn Williams and the North Carolina Courage. Plenty more post-game content coming your way after the break. It was a high-scoring affair in Cary, North Carolina today. The North Carolina Courage ultimately coming out victorious 4-3 over the Houston Dash. We dubbed this the Battle of Champions, the Houston Dash, the Challenge Cup champs, the North Carolina Courage, the two-time defending regular season NWSL champs, and I'm next to my champion, as always, Lori Lindsay, former U.S. national team midfielder. Well, that was entertaining, wasn't it? <laughs> Goals galore. You <laughs> mentioned it. Battle of the Champions that had everything back and forth, uh, score line changes, ebbs and flows to the games, and exactly from a North Carolina team that you would expect dramatics in the end. Well, just in case you can't remember everything that happened, we're here to take you through all of it. We will start in the 17th minute. Houston really coming out in the front foot, but then this foul gave North Carolina the penalty. Dabinia making a typical run out of that midfield position, drawing the foul on Alicia Chapman, and then it's Abby Dalkin for stepping up to the spot and making no mistakes about it. Low driven hard to that left corner. Just the third career goal for Abby Dahlkemper, the U.S. international. Houston, though, pouncing on a mistake in the back from the Courage. And Shea Groom doing a good job of reading Dahl Kemper, realizing that she can pick this ball off, and then just slots it to Veronica Lasko for the tap-in. Well done from those players in terms of creating those opportunities defensively. And if you're the Houston Dash, you have to love this connection, Groom and Mewis. And then Mewis just first time low into that near post, catches LeBay going the other way, and then slots it past her right-hand side. Well done for those midfields connecting and coming out of and creating chances. So it was 2-1 at halftime in favor of the dash, but Dabinia, the Brazilian international, was something to say for North Carolina. And hey, what a goal that is. We've seen that time and time from Dabinia, and we'll see more later in the game. But this would be the course changer. Alicia Chapman being shown off the field with her second yellow of the game. They would be forced to play with 10 players and it would find North Carolina getting on the front foot, starting to create more opportunities. But just as you think that the ties are changing, it would be Houston Dash getting on the scoreboard again. It's Stangle and Sophie Schmidt this time. Sophie Schmidt doing a good job of reading that play from Stangle, getting the ball out from underneath her and slotting that in that upper 90. That lead would only hold for 13 minutes because then North Carolina fell Lynn Williams, one of the all-time leading goal scorers in this league. And Lynn Williams doing well just to stay calm in the penalty spot, reading her defenders, making good connection to send that to the far post with her former Pepperdine teammate. But we have one more goal to go. Yes, more late game dramatics in this NWSL fall series. This one coming in the 86th minute, and it is Dabinia once again. And we said that she would find the back of the net again, this time doing well to adjust her feet and then bend that one to the far post. Nothing that Jane Campbell can do about that. Seems like a lifetime ago that all that scoring started with Abby Dahlkemper. She's now with Marissa. Abby, you did start off the scoring of this eventual seven goal game between these two teams. When you went up to that penalty spot, you looked so confident in your approach. How did you know where you wanted to place it? Um, good thing I was practicing and uh, coach told me before the game that I had, um, or I was on the PKs. So if that came to it and it did, so I wanted to step up and uh, complete the, the goal for my team. Your coach, Paul Riley, said that you have also stepped up in a leadership role in this fall series. How did you help lead your team in this performance? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, as a defender, you kind of have to be vocal. So I think just continuing to be vocal and, um, you know, try and lead by example. Uh, mistakes are going to happen, and it's kind of how you respond to that. And I'm um, really proud of the group. You know, we were resilient, and we got the job done. 
we saw a new formation from the Courage today, and your coach said that it's going to be a little bit of a growing pain getting used to it. From a defensive standpoint, how did you think your defense did? Yeah, I think, you know, obviously a couple goals. They scored um, some really world-class goals, but, uh, you know, this was kind of really our first time putting it to the test. So, um, you know, a couple mistakes, but definitely going to learn from that and um, watch film on that and continue to progress. Thanks for your time, Abby. Yeah, thanks. Oh my God, I had like Abby Doll Kemper leading the North Carolina Courage defensively and also adding a little offense in this seven goal affair. Her courage too. take down the Houston Dash in the both game of the fall series for both teams. We'll be back with more after the break. Everyone's still cooling down in Cary, North Carolina after this seven goal affair in our battle of champions between the North Carolina Courage and the Houston Dash. We've heard from a couple of the North Carolina players so far. Let's hear what Paul Riley has to say about this match and the win for his team. He's with Marissa. Paul, this was a very back and forth match between these two teams. Several lead changes in this one. What did this result speak to in terms of your team's character? Yeah, I think character is probably the most thing we talked about. You know, Abby Dalkamper makes an early mistake and recovers second half, so a brilliant second half. And I think they're the things you look for in the team. You know, it's a new formation for us, a little bit different for us. And the first 20 minutes, we were all over the sh all over the shop, and then we settled in. And second half, I thought we played some great stuff, created a load of chances, and. I know Davina's two goals were fantastic. The first one was out of this world. And you know, when you get goals like that, it helps, obviously. But it was a back and forth game. They had probably a little bit more pos uh, possession than we had. But I thought second off was really good. Gutsy performance, a lot of resilience and persistence. And you know, that's who we are and that's what we represent here. And I was really pleased with the second half performance. As you said, a new formation, a lot of new faces, too, for the North Carolina Courage in this match. How would you evaluate all of the newness in this game? Yeah, I mean, I think you have to look at uh, Ryan Williams, you know, 40th pick in the draft, last pick in the draft a couple of years ago was, was brilliant down the right-hand side. Uh, Haley Harbison came in at halftime, one of their first games. I thought she was brilliant second half. Laura Millay was... <laughs> The American uh, Dabinia, you know, I thought she was brilliant in the second half. And, you know, Mary Speck, is, who's, who's a lot been on the bench a lot for this team, came in in great leadership role, especially second half, held us together. And Peyton, she played in, in a back three maybe for half an hour on Wednesday afternoon, you know, so she did a hell of a job coming in for Addy, who was injured, obviously, and she settled in really well. And KK got herself together. Prince caused her a lot of problems in the first half, but second half we shut it down, and that was the difference for us. And we set, really settled in second half. And then you got to rely on class players like Dabinia and Lynn Williams to win the game for you, which they did, you know. It was a great team win. Thanks for yeah, your time. Thanks Coach. very much, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Always appreciate the opportunity to hear from Paul Riley, get his thoughts on things, and a lot of happy thoughts for his team after this one. 4-3 North Carolina Courage winners. A little bit more to wrap up after the break. Tonight on CBS begins with NCIS Los Angeles followed by Love Island, More to Love, and then the season premiere of 48 Hours. That's tonight on CBS. What a game we had here in Cary, North Carolina. Four to three, North Carolina beating Houston, a part of the NWSL Fall Series, a competition that is taking place over the next six weeks now. All nine teams in action will have 18 matches total. A game of the week on CBS Sports every week for you to keep up as these teams are in competition for the Verizon Community Shield. A very entertaining affair from Cary, North Carolina in our Battle of Champions today. For Lori Lindsay, Marissa Pilla, and our entire crew, I'm Jen Hildreth. As always, so glad to have you along. For more NWSL highlights and analysis, CBS Sports HQ has you covered. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports in association with the National Women's Soccer League.